Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you again tonight. Uh, as you can see in your outline, the title of this uh, sermon is Blindness. And uh, this verse, the intro verse in Luke 6, verse 39, um, it caught my eye after looking back on an, another uh, another sermon that I'd, I'd done earlier, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, um, on identity. And it was where uh, Jesus was saying, uh, how can you, how can you t or take the the beam that is out of your brother's eye or take the moat out of your brother's eye if there's a beam in your own. And this was one of the verses that was before that. And uh, honestly, I skipped right over it then, but this time it really struck me. It's a really small verse um, or small parable, if you will. Uh, but if you uh, join me in Luke 6, verse 39, <clears throat> when he spoke a parable, or he spake a parable unto them, can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? Uh, it's pretty simple until you really start to think about what does he mean by blind? I mean, it is it is somewhat of a metaphor in this sense. Um, but, I mean, the truth is, it's exactly what happens. Um, if someone can't see anything, it's trying to lead someone else that can't see anything and there's a ditch in front of them, they're going to fall in it. And what happens when you fall in a ditch? You usually get dirty, you get muddy, you get hurt. Not good things. So, <clears throat> it's got me thinking uh, about what, 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 is, what exactly does he mean here? Um, does he mean that we're all blind? Does he mean that some of us are blind and some of us aren't? Um, so I started looking into it a little more and saw a lot of different instances where uh, these people had Christ right in front of them and they couldn't even see him for who he was and for what he could do for them. And so in your outline, I think I, I wrote these in there, these points. <clears throat> there were many who met Christ in his lifetime, even more that have heard his gospel. Some of them would seek him out, others were sought out by him. And many physically saw him and witnessed the miracles that he, he would perform. Each of these people were invited by him personally to follow him, but many ended up walking away. So some of the examples that I saw um, were in Luke, some of them were in Matthew, some were in Mark. So we're going to be jumping around a little bit in the, in the uh, uh, in the New Testament, the early New Testament. So join me in Luke 9. I'm going to read 57 through 62. <clears throat> and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, Suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the, bear, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my home, at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. All these people had something else to do. They... You know, he said, follow me. I am I am the door. I'm your savior. And they're like, ah, could you wait a minute? I got to go do this. Or I'm really busy right now. I'll get back to you when I'm not. I don't know about you, but I am never not busy. <laughs> I never have a spare moment. Um, I guess I used to when I was younger. Um, I didn't know how non-busy I was until I had kids, got a job, did grad school, you name it. But um, there's never the right time. Um, there's never a spare moment that you can go and seek out the word and, and uh, do 
basically what Christ is asking each one of these people to do, to follow him. You just have to prioritize. You have to make it a part of your day. And if you don't, then it'll just never happen. It's kind of like waiting for the right time to have kids. <laughs> uh, right time is right now. So in, these, in this verse, uh, one man claimed that he would follow Christ after he buried his father. Another said, after he went home, said goodbye to his family. So they didn't put following Christ first. They didn't think it was important. So another example is in Luke also, <clears throat> chapter 18. Starting in verse 18, I'm going to read through 25. And a, and a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Uh, here's another person, right face to face with, with Christ himself. And... Uh, he said, man, I've been following all of your, uh, all of your teachings, and uh, I just need to know the last thing I need to do. I'm going to check that off the list, and then I'm going to have eternal life. Just let me know the last thing I need to do. And when he told him, when Christ told him, he said, no, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> That's just way too important to me. Um, I have too much money, so I can't give that up. He was blinded by the... By, the, by his riches. He's being led by the blindness of his, of his money. And that's, uh, that's very unfortunate. And uh, again, going back to Luke 6.39, it's the blind leading the blind. He's being led not to salvation, but by his own wants and his own desires, fleshly desires. So, as I put in there, um, all these men were being led by the blindness of this world. There are more important things to do than follow Christ. And uh, as I'm going to go over in the next couple of verses, even the disciples that followed Christ, saw him in the flesh, saw him perform all these miracles, were still subject to these, to these temptations. Um, they were part of God's elect, and they, they looked away from Christ from time to time. So... If you join me in Mark chapter 9, pretty good example of this. <clears throat> and he came to Capernaum, and being in, the house, being in the house, he asked them, What was it that ye disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, the disciples, that is. For, for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, what, and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all, and servant of all. And he took a child and set him, set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that has sent me. So here the disciples were arguing, who's going to be the greatest of all of us? Who's going to be the top? You know, who's going to, who's going to be the, the one that Jesus likes the most? Or that's uh, going to be the leader of the group? So they weren't worried about following Christ. They weren't thinking about following Christ. They were thinking about who's going to be the best. And they argued over it among themselves. So then... Uh, Later on in Matthew, chapter 19, verse 27, if you could join me there. Mm 
one of the disciples, Peter, um, was wondering, and he actually asked uh, asked Christ, what would be the, his reward for his sacrifice of all of his earthly belongings and his life? So in chapter 19, verse 27, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we are forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? So he, he asked Christ, what, what are you going to give us? We gave up all this stuff. And uh, he wasn't thinking about following Christ. He was thinking about what he did and what he'd get for it. What, was, what, would, his, what would be his reward? So then in Mark 10, verse 35 through 40, um, you can join me there. They there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of uh, disciples that wanted to know where their place would be in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to ask Christ, "Where are we going to sit by you?" So, <clears throat> in verse 35, and James and John, the sons sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, "Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatever we shall desire." And he said unto them, "What would ye that I should do for you?" They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit, one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand, in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they saith unto him, We can. <laughs> and Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with. With all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. So they were worried about where they are going to sit, and they didn't even know the price to be paid. Uh, they had no idea what they were walking into. They had no idea... If they did, I doubt they'd be asking these questions. Um, they would be thinking long and hard, as I'm sure Christ did, on the way to uh, on the way to his death. What was going to happen, and uh, how it was all going to play out? And constantly, Christ would get them back looking the right way. And it was it's almost like uh, well, it's almost like the father dealing with a child. You know, they're distracted on this, they're distracted on that. You just keep them guide, keep them looking ahead keep keep them from straying off the path so the last thing i saw the disciples uh, one of the examples from from uh, from Christ's journey with the disciples was in mark 10 verse 41 through 45 <clears throat> and this happened right after um, when john, uh, james and john were asking jesus where they were going to sit um, the others reacted immediately, thinking that the, those two guys were going to take something from them. So, in verse 41, uh, And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. But Jesus called unto him, uh, called them to him, and saith unto them, Ye you know, you know that they which are in, accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. And to give his life a ransom for many. Again, Jesus puts him right back in line with what they should be thinking of, what they should be looking to, what they should be following. And it isn't their position. It isn't money. It isn't anything that's of this world. It's you were brought into a life of servitude. And if you are the top, if you are the person who is going to be leading, you have to sacrifice for them. Just as Christ's sacrifice for you. And this, to me, uh, really spoke to a father and a family. You put all your needs last, every single time. And almost to the point where you don't even think of your needs anymore. You think of your kids, you think of your wife, you think of your family. And that's who these people were to Christ. They were, they were his family. That's who, the, that's who the elect are to him as well.
So these men followed Christ, and they saw his miracles, heard his teachings, believed he was the Son of God. And they were still distracted by the blindness of the world from time to time, looked away from Christ to the things they wanted, and he had to bring them back in proper perspective time and time again. So um, what this says to me throughout all of these uh, examples is that the, the blind can't be given sight because they can buy it with money or they're great, they've achieved greatness or they sacrificed everything they had or they're sitting in the right place or they convinced someone to give it to them. It has to be something else. So what is that something else? Well, this brought me to one of, uh, one of Pastor Warner's uh, parables that he went to quite a bit, of, quite a few times. And actually, Pastor Chuck recently brought it up, and it just completed the picture for me. Um, by God's grace, it all just came together. It was, it was, pretty, it was pretty cool. <laughs> um, so in Luke 18, I'd like to read verse 40, or 35 through 43. <clears throat> and it came to pass that he was come nigh to Jericho. A certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so, so much the more, thou son of David, David, have mercy on me. Excuse me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight, followed him, glorifying God and all the people. When they saw it, gave praise unto God. Blind Bartimaeus, born blind, physically blind. After crying for mercy, he was given his physical sight from Christ. A miracle before a bunch of people. As a result, he was given to see so much more. So much more than what he could see physically. Um, just as you saw in the last part of the, the verse, first thing he did was gave praise to God. He didn't go, whoa, look at all this stuff that I can see now. He gave praise to God. And that's very significant to me. I mean, if you've been blind all your life... First, I don't know what the first thing I would do, but, um, well, <laughs> I guess it's never happened, so I can't say. So, <clears throat> so from this, you um, can ask yourself, what was blind Bartimaeus given to see? Well, first thing he saw was the seriousness of his situation. So in verse 35 through uh, 38, it said... Uh, came to pass, he was come nigh to Jericho, and that's when he um, heard a bunch of people, and uh, when he heard that Jesus was there, he knew that he needed to do something. He needed to call attention to himself. He needed to cry for mercy. Um, why was this? Well, he was destitute. He was disabled. He couldn't see. So back in this time, um, blind people were poor. They're beggars. They couldn't work to, to give them the things they needed for, for life. They couldn't work to provide the necessities of life. Well, this is a lot like lost man. Lost man has spiritual blindness. So it's, and this is actually much more serious than physical blindness. And because, uh, because of sin, the lost are spiritually blind to the saving grace of the gospel. So, if you join me within, join me in Second Corinthians, verse four, three through four, explains this. <clears throat> uh, I believe it's Peter explains this. <clears throat> but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So the lost are spiritually blind. 
Um, very much like the situation of blind Bartimaeus. He couldn't see anything. He can't work. He can't provide for himself. That's that's lost man to a T. Um, lost are also blind to their lost condition, eternal damnation, and sin. So uh, this was in Revelation 3.17. This was another verse that uh, Pastor Chuck shared with us, uh, I think it was last week. And this, again, totally completed the picture for me on this. So uh, join me in Revelation 3.17. <clears throat> Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. So this, I'm going to get to this a little bit later, um, when, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, so like, like blind Bartimaeus, lost man cannot work to secure his need, and before the lost are saved, they're brought to realize their lost estate. They must realize that they are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, just like in Revelation. They must realize that there's nothing they can personally do to, to attain salvation. They're just, they're just sitting on the side of the road waiting for somebody to come along. Um, again, in, uh, another example of this is this not being able to work toward your salvation is in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. And this is one you probably have memorized, so I can just read it real quick. <clears throat> For by grace ye are, are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest ma any man should boast. It's a free gift. It's a free gift of mercy. Mercy from God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So what else did uh, blind Bartimaeus see? He saw the coldness of the world, the coldness of the crowd. These people aren't going to help you. I wouldn't even rely on people from the church. I mean, we can't save you. We can't do anything for you. It's Christ. Christ's word. Christ's work. That's the only thing to follow. And as you saw the disciples, they looked away. People of this world are, don't even know which way to look. So in verse 38 and 39, um, this is where they... Uh, the people that were with him rebuked him and said he should hold his peace. But he cried, the much, cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Blind Bartimaeus didn't care. He just kept crying. He, he needed help. He needed someone to save. He needed mercy. Um, Christ's disciples did this before in Luke 18, 15. Um, you turn there real quick. <clears throat> And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. And later on Christ said, no, just let me have the children. I'll, you know, I'll take care of this. Um, so you can't, you can't rely on, on even the disciples to, to, to follow them. It's, it's Christ and Christ alone. Uh, what else did blind Bartimaeus see? see? He saw the mercy of Christ. What did Christ do when he cried out for him? He responded. He said, stand up. Bring that guy over here. I was meant to see him. I was meant to save him. Uh, Bartimaeus cried for mercy. Christ heard Bartimaeus' cries. And uh, what did he say? He cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus didn't feel entitled he didn't think he deserved it. He didn't think he deserved his sight. He was seeking Christ's mercy. And this is where that uh, verse in Revelation really came together. When I looked up the, the uh, Greek text for mercy, the last definition, the, the word is like, is Ella, Elio. And it, the last definition was to bring help to the wretched to experience mercy. So in Revelation uh, 3.17, uh, And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That right there fits it together perfectly. Um, if, if, uh, if you think you're rich, increased with goods, you indeed have nothing. But if you cry for mercy, this kind of mercy, Christ's mercy, is for the wretched. 
is for the lost. And then finally, <clears throat> he saw the power of Christ. Uh, Christ just, I don't think he even touched him. I think he just spoke it into existence. He just said, you can see now. And then he did. That was it. And uh, what, did blind Bartimaeus, what did blind Bartimaeus do after that? Well, he didn't celebrate and the wonders of all the things that he could see. He didn't go around uh, looking at things, looking at this, looking at that. No. He praised God. He said, this is God's mercy. This is Christ. This is the person who came to save me personally out of my sin. So, um, kind of putting all this into perspective, putting it all in a, in a conclusion in a nutshell, not real easy to do, um, but I tried to, I limited it to six things, and I think I have them on your outline. Put following Christ above all things. Don't be like um, the, the guy who had to go bury his father, or the guy who had to go say goodbye to his family, or the rich guy who didn't want to give up his, his money. Be like blind Bartimaeus. Cry for mercy. Um, don't worry about who is the greatest or what rewards you receive. Worry about where your place of honor will be or other, what others are doing to take it from you. Just cry for mercy like blind Bartimaeus. Mercy is needed to see the seriousness of your situation, the coldness of the world. Mercy is needed to see the power of Christ and be brought into salvation. So I hope that helps. Uh, it really, really helped me put everything into perspective this last week.